Okay, hello everyone, and welcome back to Trivia. Um, <coughs> we're doing some fun trivia here. I've moved away from Mobile One for the bit here. Um, we're going to be doing one of the only prehistory th ones, which I think I might actually be good at. <laughs> um, <coughs> but this is called Prehistory 2 Fantastic Animals. Um, let me just close them. Um, and this is just about... Um, well, it's got a terrible average score with difficult difficulty. Um, so yeah, hopefully we can do better than 4 out of 10. So starting off here, which animal is very well equipped against cold weather? So you've got the saber-toothed cat, woolly mammoth, the American lion, or the Colombian mammoth? Um, I think it's going to be one of the two mammoths. I'm going to go with woolly mammoth, but I feel like it might be the Colombian. Um, what period did trilobites first appear? Um, trilobites... I think it might be the Precambrian. They were one of the first actual animals to appear. Um, although I think it could be Silurian. It could be the Silurian seas that they first appeared in. I'm trying to recall. Um, Carboniferous period. First emergence of what animal? Uh, snakes and salamanders, raptors, pathiole mints, <laughs> or mammoths? <laughs> mammoths, mammals. Sorry. Um, the Carboniferous period, I know, is where um, I believe actually a lot of um, <coughs> a lot of coal and things come from the Carboniferous period. Um, Carboniferous, because that's when we had all of the giant bugs, because there was lots of carbon in the air. Um, hence, why it's called Carboniferous. So it had giant. Um, you had giant something like two meters long or something um, millipedes and centipedes you had a dragonfly with a one meter wingspan all these different things um, so I think possibly snakes and salamanders are going to be the first things well emerged during the Carboniferous um, what period did trilobites and other marine, gra marine groups become extinct Cretaceous with the end of the dinosaurs because ichthyosaurs and things fed on trilobites um, or more ammonites. So, definitely during the Cretaceous, um, uh, you know, the massive meteorite. What was the ancestor for most modern reptiles? Devonian. Dinoptigirgilius. <laughs> Ceratosaurus or Diapsid? Um, hmm. It's the ancestor for most modern reptiles. I'm going to say that. I have no idea what it is, but I'm going to say that. Um, although, hmm, not too sure. What period saw the rise of dinosaurs? Triassic, because you first had Coelophysis come in in the Triassic period. Uh, turn. Tertiary, I believe that's the period after the Cretaceous, or it's the period where modern humans first appeared. I'm not too sure about that, but because of course you got the Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous for when the dinosaurs ruled. Um, <coughs> we all know that the human race never lived together with dinosaurs. Knowing that, which area did Homo habilitus live? Um, true. I'm gonna say, hmm, Paleozoic, Primozoic, hmm. Mesoic, or s mm, I think Mesoic. How many epochs is the tertiary period divided into five? I'm going to say no idea. Um, in which period did the first type of dogs appear? Ooh, um, I don't think there were any mammals that were like dogs. Although mm, I'm going to say Cretaceous. However, I feel it's probably going to be the ter uh, that one, the the tertiary period. Um, what kind of dinosaurs emerged during the Cretaceous period? Winged, glacial, horned, or sea dinosaurs? Don't think it would have been sea dinosaurs. Uh, don't think it was horned dinosaurs. Well, actually, thinking about it, Triceratops appeared during that time. Um, so I think possibly actually horned dinosaurs. Have I missed out any? No, do I want to change any? Probably. Um, but let's have a go. Oh god. 
So the woolly mammoth was right. Okay, good. So it was the woolly mammoth. Uh, it was the Cambrian period. Oh, okay then. Um, oh, to the end of the Permian era. Mm, okay. Um, snakes and salamanders. Yep. Yeah, okay. Giant bugs roared. Yeah. Um, trilobites. Oh, they became extinct in the Permian period. Okay. Oh. Okay. Sure. Um, it was the Apsid, right? Okay. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Triassic. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so we got that wrong. Hey, that was a complete guess and I got it right. <laughs> Five, yeah, so you got the Pliocene, the Miocene, the Oligocene, Eocene, and the Paleocene. Great. Um, oh, okay, yeah, so it was tertiary period. Oh, of course it would have been, because they were domesticated from buggering wolves. Okay, um... Of course it was. Bugger! I should have remembered that, um, but I didn't. I I thought they meant like. Okay, I got that wrong anyway. So it was the that period. Okay, and yeah, horned dinosaurs. Yeah, okay. So five out of ten. That's better than average, <laughs> considering that average is four. <laughs> so I got half of them right. So I mean, uh, decent enough. Um, and the next one that I've chosen here is um, a short quiz on infantry weapons used by both the Allies and the Axis. Um, which was the most common rifle used by the US Marines when first engaging the Japanese? You got the Springfield, the Grand, the Carbine. I don't think it would be the Lee Enfield. I'm th I think possibly Grand. Main rifle issued to US soldiers during World War II. Grand. Main rifle issued to the Germans. Carbina 98. Okay. That's a machine pistol, hence why it's called MP. Main German machine gun issued to infantry troops at the start of World War II. MG 34. Because MG 42 wasn't built until 1942, hence why it's got 42 in the name, and the FG 42, especially for the Fulschimjäger, hence why it's called the FG 42 Fulschimjäger Gewehr. And MG34 was the precursor to the MG42. The MG15 was more of an aircraft machine gun, I believe. What US submachine gun was designed and manufactured during World War II and served in limited numbers during and after Vietnam? Uh, US submachine gun. M1A1 Thompson. Which the following American weapons did not have the designation M1. M1 Carbine, M1 Garand, Thompson M1A1, or the Springfield 1903. What weapon was nicknamed Hitler's blood, uh, Buzzsaw MG42? And I have to say this because it's, um, it's one of the only facts I know about the MG42. During World War II, when the German troops were holding off the eastern gate of... Um, holding off the eastern gate of Berlin... They had there was a small squad of soldiers, I believe, on some sort of ridge line, and they had a single MG42. The MG42, for people that don't know, fires 1,200 rounds a minute at maximum after changing the barrel many, many times. And the reason that they lost that flank and that they lost the gates of Berlin to the east was because the Russians sent so many soldiers the MG42 couldn't cut them down quick enough. <laughs> That's the, one of the only facts I know about the MG42. Um, anyway, what machine gun has its roots in Czechoslovakia? The Bren! I know that. Because EN stands for Enfield, which is where the British started making them, but then the BR stands for... I'm not too sure where, but I, I'm fairly certain it has its roots in Czechoslovakia. What's the average score? 5 out of 10. Okay. Hopefully I can do quite well. Which was the most common sidearm in the German army during World War Two? Hmm, the Walther P-38, I remember, was the next one to the Luger. So it was the development of the Luger. Um, it's not the Browning 9... <laughs> it's not it's, it's not the M-1911. That's American. Um, uh, I think... I think the Walther, Walther P-38... Actually, no, I think the Luger P08. I think that probably wasn't more diversely spread until the middle and end of the war. Which weapons served in the armed forces of America, Belgium, and Poland dur before and during World War II under several designations? That's the BAR. I know that because the um, P 
Polish had like a WZ38 or something version of it, I can't remember what, but it was something like that, and that was a BAR um, derivant. Yeah, okay, so it was the Springfield. I thought it would be. I thought it would be a, a choice between the Grand and the Springfield, yeah, okay, but main rifle issued to the US Millennium Mobile 2, yeah, the Grand 8 round clip. Main, I, yeah, okay. Carbine K98 or 98K. Um, main German machine gun, yep, yeah, MG34. It was replaced by the MG42, but yeah, it continued until the end of the war, yeah. MG42 wasn't built until the uh, middle of the war or something like that. Um, oh, it was the M3 grease gun, okay. Not the Thompson, yeah. It, it was the Sten of the Americans, basically, the grease gun. Um, which of the following? Yep, yeah, Springfield, Springfield 1903, the rest of them are all M1s. Nickname here is Little Blood Sword, MG42, favourite machine gun. Um, although the Bren comes in later. Um, there we go, what is it? There you go, Bruno. I knew it was something like that. But yeah, so Bruno and something else. Oh, it was the ball for P38. Yeah. It was still being replaced by the wolf though, okay. Production on both continued, yeah, okay. I don't know, I prefer the look of the Lugo over the Walther, but oh well. Um, and the BAR. Oh, I got 7 out of 10. Average score, 6 out of 10. Yes, I know things. <laughs> I know things. <laughs> so there you go. Um, yeah, I could have taken a swing at that, but I wasn't too sure if they'd be getting phasing them out yet, but okay. Um, now, I've also got armor trivia, so I don't know why infantry weapons was in armor. <laughs> But okay. Um, let's try tanks. Yes. Take a quiz. Single page. The M4 Sherman was considered a heavy tank for the time. Ooh. False. Largest tank gun put on the M4. 105 howitzer for the bulldozer Sherman. Mm. Was it considered a heavy tank for the time? I don't think so. Tog 2. Designed by Britain. Yes. I clicked Germany accidentally. <laughs> because... Tog 2, the old gang, built by the developers of the male and female tanks from World War 1. Um, heaviest tank was named what? The Mouse. Because you've got the N26 Pershing, the King, the IS-2, and the Mouse. The T-70 belonged to the Soviets. The lightest tank used during World War 2... That's a good question. I th reckon the Fiat. Char 2C belongs to France. Uh, Japanese heavy tank Type 5 Chiri had a 37mm. Did it? No. Didn't have a secondary. Did it? I don't know. I'm not very good with my Japanese tanks. On the M13-40 and the M14-41 Italian tanks, how long training was given to the crews? Probably only 25 days. Um, because, you know, Italy. Um, P2640 Italian heavy tank was never issued to the Italian army. Uh, I think it's true, but I'm going to say false. But I feel it's true. Type 5 Cheery. Does it? I know the Chinu guy doesn't. It might only have a 37. I'm going to say it didn't have one. It's a Japanese tank. Yeah, yeah Sherman wasn't a heavy tank, yeah. On was a 105, yeah. 75, long barrel 76, and then the 105. Yeah. Britain, yep, yeah, made the TOC 2. The mouse, yep, yeah, Soviet Union. Oh, it was the A4 E11. Only 2.17 tons. Some cars weigh heavier than that. Only 15% of people got that right, so yeah, unsurprising. Char 2C belonged to France, yeah. Oh, it did have a 37. Oh, okay, well, there you go. No, it was a choice, really. Yep, I thought so, 20, uh, 25 days. Correct answer was T. True, yeah, okay. So, it, it was. It was true. Okay, I thought so. Average score, 6 out of 10. I got 7 out of 10. Great success. Um, okay, let's do... Um, because of the various tank destroyers. 10 questions. These are only short ones, luckily. Need to keep checking my... No, don't watch Discord. Oh, bug of that. Um, <coughs> which tank destroyer was created by Ferdinand Porsche to fight an Operation Zitadel but suffered from many fatal problems? I'm going to say the Elephant, because the hull is artillery. Oh, bugger off. 
There you go. Which was the most powerful tank destroyer in World War II based on one of the most feared German tanks, the Jagdtiger. That's the Jagdtiger. Based on the King Tiger, but with a box chassis, uh, with a box upper fighting compartment, and a 128, but many of them had to be fitted with 88s because they ran out of 128s because it was the end of the war. American producers called this tank the M10. What did the British call it? They called it the Wolverine. Because, you know, we're British. Um, the M10 Wolverine. Um, this tank destroyer was nicknamed the Hellcat for its amazing speed and maneuverability. M18 Hellcat, M36 Jackson, M56 Scorpion, M50, I don't know. <laughs> Although the British mainly used American-made M10s, they also tried to make a few of their own. These were... A30 Avengers. Yes. Um, because they were better. Because <laughs> they had 17-pounders in them. Which was the only nation that did not produce tank destroyers. Well, that's obviously Britain. Britain because, you know... Actually, no. China. Because China didn't have anything, really. Japan had assault guns and things. Germany definitely had them. The UK had the Archer and things. Okay. Um, the gun on the M10 was just how many millimetres wider than that on the gun of an M4 Sherman? One millimetre. Because they had a 76 rather than a 75. <laughs> because, you know. On the M36, Jackson had a 90 millimetre. I do believe. Which country designed and built the Semivent M41? Sounds American. I believe it's the M41 SPG that like you get in World of Tanks, but again, not too sure. This was a widely used German self propelled gun that bl blurred the distinction between tank destroyer and self propelled assault artillery. Widely used, so it won't be the Sturmwasser Tiger. Ooh, this is interesting. So you got the Jagdpanzer, Jagdpanzer 4, Stug 3, Sturmgeschütz, Dreiss, and then you've got the Hetzer, and then you've got the Sturmwasser Tiger, the big, massive 380mm rocket Tiger. But that wasn't widely used. They built about 12 of them or something, so it can't be that. Hetzer was widely used, as was the Sturmgeschütz, as was the Jagdpanzer to a lesser degree. Hmm. I'm going to say Sturmgeschütz because it could be mounted with the 105. Hets are good. And a flamethrower. But I'm going to stick with Stug. The Elephant, yes. Yeah, because you got the Tiger P, but then it was rejected by Hitler and instead the Tiger 1 was made. Yeah, the Yang Tiger. Able to get through any Allied armour. The M10 Wolverine, yeah, the M18 Hellcat, only 58% of people knew that. Oh, it was the Archer. Wait. Oh, I thought it was... Oh, okay. I thought... Oh, I misread the question, that's what I did. That's what I did, I misread the question. I thought they were saying... What was the British made M tens? I thought they were saying Britain tried making some M10s. What did they call them? But they weren't saying that, they were make it saying what did the British make, in which case it was the Archer based off of the Valentine with a 17 pounder. Okay. Well, okay. <laughs> which was the only nation, yep, China, because Britain actually did do some things. As did everyone else. Uh, yep, the M10 was armed with the 76, whilst the Sherman had this little 75, which was terrible. M36 Jackson had th the big gun. Ah, of course, Semavente. I should have guessed from that that it was Italy. Um, but I thought they were talking about the self propelled gun as in artillery, but okay. I could have got 10 out of 10 on that one. And the, Stu and the Stug was the correct one. Sturm also, yeah. Beb, beb, beb. Yep. Okay, so, not too bad. Um, I could have got 10 out of 10. That would have been quite interesting, wouldn't it? Um, let's have a look. What else we got? Odd weapons of World War Two. Actually, no. Let's go with the Tiger. Let's round it off with the Tiger. Because, yeah. Technical designation was the Tiger given. The Tiger was given the technical designation Panzerkampfwagen 6 Tiger Ein. Panzer 6. 
which was the size of the main gun on the Tiger. That was the 88. That was the Kampfwagen Cannon 8.8 centimeter. Kampfwagen Cannon 36L56. That was the proper designation. There we go. 8.8 centimeter. Kampfwagen Cannon 36L56. Yeah. Um, approximately how many Tiger ones were made? 13.50. Yeah. On average, how many Sherman tanks were wasted for every Tiger one that they destroyed? Five. Three tractors bait, two to flank round the sides. Which company pr uh, produced Tiger ones? Uh, Hench School. What's it? I don't know. I have a Haynes manual on it, but I can't remember. It might have been Daimler Benz, or was it Porsche? It wasn't the Porsche Tiger. It was the Hench School Tiger. Yeah, because you had Porsche and Hench School. How heavy was the average Tiger One? Uh, average Tiger One, 55 tons, I believe. Which German tank commander was considered the Tiger One, the best Tiger One commander of his time? Herr Meidel Ritzman. Yeah. Was the Tiger One ever sold to an army outside of Germany? Yes. Japan, but it never arrived. So the Japanese had one. And I think if they're referencing to that, then it would be yes. Which Allied weapon was able to match the Tiger? It wasn't the law. C4 I don't think existed. Probably the M36, Tank Buster. Which tank replaced the Tiger 1 as the frontline heavy battle tank of German forces during World War II? Well, the King, technically, during the Ardennes. The King was the King of, you know. But other than that, it wasn't replaced. So I don't know. A lot of these is... Some of these are basing on how they're thinking. If they're thinking it was replaced by the king during the Ardennes, then there you go. But if they were ignoring the Ardennes and saying that the king never was mainstream enough, it wasn't replaced. The same with... Uh, I don't know which was the next other one. Oh well. Um, submit my answers. Let's have a look. Can we get 10 out of 10? No. It was 11. No. Okay. Um, so yeah, it was the Panzer VI. Panzer Kampfwagen. Armored battle car with tracks. It's the 88mm. Approximately how many were made? 1350. Yeah. 11 were actually done. Oh, okay then. Hench school. Yeah. Because, you know, Henschkel and Porsche. How heavy? 55 tons. Michael Wittmann. Yes, it was. There we go. Japanese. Yep. So, I was right. They did count that in. Um, the King was replaced for it. And the M36 for its 90mm. Yeah, okay. I didn't quite know that one. <laughs> so, yeah, but there you go. So I got 9 out of 10 correct on the Mighty Tiger 1. Um, so there we go. That's not too bad of a result. Um, so, yeah. That's just some more quizzes. Uh, more generalised, but more World War 2 this time, rather than World War 1. Um, so, yeah. Quite interesting. I'll thank you all for watching, and goodbye.